up guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Steven Tillman. Today we're gonna to be talking about some simple editing techniques in the flambient real estate photography world. Don't know, first time to the channel, consider subscribing. If it's your first time here, I'm gonna break it down real fast. You have four typical shots. You have your ambient shot, your flash shot, your window pull, and then my safety shot. I always do the safety shot because you never know. You can get back home and realize, crap, there's a reflection of the flash or me or whatever. And you can fix that with that safety shot. So always take those four photos at least. If it's a larger area with bigger windows, you'll have to take two or three window pulls. But on the window pull with the flash aimed at the window and the safety shot are always at the exact same exposure. Does not change. Do not touch your camera, turn your flash off, do one more shot, and that is your safety shot. So here we are in Lightroom. When you have your photos, you highlight them all. You right click, open with, I always use Adobe Lightroom Classic and it will open up. Down below there is an affiliate link for Adobe. If you do not have it already, you can seamlessly work between Lightroom and Photoshop at no extra cost to you. And for $30 a month, $29.99 I think is what it is, you can get every single app that Adobe offers, which is kind of cool. And a little small tip that I did actually when the new year started is they then bump it up to $59.99 or something like that. So it's double the price. So what you do is you cancel your subscription and then resubscribe. It takes like five minutes and they put you back in that $29.99. Do that every year and you can keep all the apps for 30 bucks and never have to pay more. Just a little side note. So once you import them, they will look like this. If it is a darkened grayed out square, which is a little bit darker, make sure it's checked. You can uncheck all or check all we want to check all import it and it will bring it into the little library on your keyboard hit d and you will start the develop mode so what i'm going to do is these little presets i already have made up so you can see there's orange this will de orange and lift all the shadows and do my little bump so you can see everything right here just bumped Bring the highlights way down because I don't want these to look blown out. I still want them to have a light to them. I still want them to glow a little bit because they are lights. Don't want it to look unnatural. Bring up my shadows. You can see right here the shadows were a little down. So bring those up. And of course you can tweak these. Make them look like the way you want it to look. So I'm looking up here in my histogram. It's a little right of center which is fine to me. It's kind of the sweet spot. I want my temperature to kind of line up like that get most of the colors kind of lined up together. I don't want any colors standing out. So I click the de-orange and it still is a little orange in there. So what happens is if you bring a lot of orange out, you can see that the floor, which wood floors will be, they'll have a little orange tint to them. So you want to not do too much, but you want to do enough that it is not nasty looking. So you can see right here, this is a, not a very well lit photo. I was in a hurry. But look, so with my flash shot, I'm able to bring that up to right of center, just like my ambient shot. And it's a little orange. So you can look up here on the histogram and you can see the colors kind of lining up a little better. Uh, what I'm looking for in the color is I want the color of the wood table and the brick right here. That's the actual color without all this light pollution. That's what I call it. I want that to be in there. Uh, I want that to look natural the way that it actually looks and not all nasty looking like this one. But you'll see why I took a lot of that orange out in just a minute. So then we go to the window pool. So I'm adjusting, you can see my ISO is 400, my f-stop is 6.3, and my shutter speed is 250. I'm at 10 millimeters, so on a crop sensor, I'm using the Canon 90D, it's about 17 millimeter, and then I do my safety shot. Now you can see how the safety shot and the flash are just a tad bit different. It's a little more brown in this one. I want to blue it up, not make it so brown. You see it immediately starts to look more natural. So I just go back and forth and see that's what I'm looking at is that tree out there. I can probably bring a little more blue into it. You can see how the histogram, they start really lining up together and looking better. That's the way you want it. That's how you know that you got a, a, a good match. I'm looking at that brown grass. I'm just doing my arrow keys back and forth, left and right. You can switch photos left and right. Back and forth, boom, it looks exactly the same. Now, you may ask yourself, well, why did I even do this safety shot? Now, look, I told you I was in a hurry because the faster we work in real estate, the more we make per hour. That's just the facts. You look over here. Now, look, see that glare? 
See that glare? That is gonna have to be fixed. So that's why I wanna match these up as close as possible. And so what I did is I just took the flash on the window pool and popped it right at that window. I want that light to completely light up this entire area all the way around because when we use darken mode in a minute inside of Photoshop, that's what it's gonna use to bring that darker from outside to the front. All right, so that's our ambient, looks decent. It's our flash, we still got a lot of orange. So let's see if we can go down here and get some of that orange out. Shift and click, one through four. Right click, edit in, all the way down, open as layers in Photoshop. This will take a couple minutes, but it'll open all the layers on top of each other in the order that we shot them, and that's important. All right, so they all open in Photoshop. Now, in this process, you're gonna have a brush, you're gonna paint. Something I suggest and will be linked below is this Wacom tablet. It makes my life a thousand times easier because it has this little pen with soft keys and I can literally just be able to paint and do it quickly. It's very hard to do it on a trackpad or with the mouse. You just, it makes life so much easier. So my first thing that I always do is shift, click, highlight all of these. Go up here to edit, auto align layers. Make sure that this first auto is there. Click OK, and then I click the little eyeball to watch it jump to make sure that my lines are, I'm looking at this chair, There's some lines right here that, can, that are solid go-to lines, because the shadows jumping will kind of trick you and make you think that it's not a line when it actually will be. So make sure the windows, things are correct, cool, everything looks good. So I click out to the side, it will highlight that first one. I do Command J, I will go to Luminosity, and I will put a layer mask. Put a layer mask on this one. Alter Option, click Layer Mask, it'll put a black one. So we're on Luminosity, click B for brush. Now, you see I have a black mask right here, so I need my paint that I'm gonna be painting to be white. So to toggle back and forth, quick keys to know is X. So let's say I'm down here on this, whatever. See I have blue whatever color whatever color you want it to be okay let's say you're wanting to make it to be black and white hit D and it'll automatically go to black and white but as you're painting make sure you have the right brush X toggles you want white to reveal we're wanting to get some of that natural light coming in you want your flow on your, you want your opacity to be 100 you want to be able to see everything that you're painting but you want your flow to be down to like 5 10 9 percent whatever is comfortable for you because the flow is when you paint one time how much it will be painting and then flow can build on top of each other so it'll end up being 100 percent opacity is no matter how much you paint it'll stay at the percentage you set it at why am i doing luminosity because luminosity affects light instead of color so the nasty orange colors are not necessarily coming in. Now, you gotta remember too, yes, all this is orange and it looks kinda nasty, but most houses have the nasty orange lights. So I wouldn't stress too much about it, but you can if you want. Like, this is a uh, beauty in the eye of the beholder type situation. So let's go to the normal and see what happens. So you can see a lot of that orange kinda comes out not a big deal at all sometimes orange is okay but in this particular instance it kind of is what it is right here I this is my flash shot so if I click alt I can see exactly what I'm about to grab hold down alt and click it again so I shift and click these two layers bring them all the way to the top I hide that second one click off to the side alter option mask because I want to hide and then I change the blending mode to darken now I want to do my flow at 100%, I just want to show you. Do you see the magic witchcraft? See all that? See how that's working right there? Because of the dark wood. And this is why I wanted to do this video, because this can be very frustrating if you're painting and it's supposed to be working and it's not. 85 to 90 percent of real estate will have like white around the windows the white little trim but some of these kind of rustic properties will not have it 
So Command Z will undo all of that. How can we do this to make it make your life easier? Push L on your keyboard, and you'll see that up here there is a polygonal lasso tool, a regular lasso tool, and magnetic lasso tool. So what I want to do is be on polygonal. If you hold, if you click and hold Z on your keyboard, and then just move your mouse in. You'll see right there that you can get as close to right where you have it focused. It'll focus in that spot. I can do it over here. It'll focus in that spot. So I want to get closer so we can kind of see. Then if you're zoomed in and you space bar, you can move your frame around to where you can get really where you want to go. So let's just do a, let's do right here. You remember there was a glare? I'm going to see if I do it inside, if there still will be a glare. So in the middle of me doing this, uh, nope, don't want to do that. So like I just did a, a piece that I didn't like. If you hit delete, it will erase that last time you touch down. I'm just kind of doing this. Because in the grand scheme of things, it will not matter and people will not be able to tell that it is different. If I double click when I'm on the same path as where I started, It'll connect itself if I'm lined up with it. B for brush again. Let's paint it. So you can see right there, Command D will deselect everything. Now you can see a little bit right here. Okay, let's bring our brush down. And you can do that by the brackets. That's kind of left, top left of your inner key. I want to get it real small. Do that, and then I hold shift and click down where I'm wanting it to be, and it will come next to it. Just paint that in real soft, real easy. And you're like, well, they'll know. No, they won't. Click X, because I want to cover up what I did right here. Just kind of do that. Because light casts shadows. So they will never know that that is not natural. You know why? Because they're all the way out here. They will never be able to see that, ever. So we know that we have to do the same thing over here because of the first time we did it. Push L again, the same exact process. So I wanna have the polygonal lasso tool. Just kinda go right up against this thing. You don't have to use the pen tool. You don't have to get crazy. I know that I'm lined up up here. So if I'm right here, I can double click. It will automatically go straight. B for brush. Make that brush bigger with the brackets. And let's paint that joker in. Let's get that brush bigger. There we go. Easy. Easy. Command D will deselect. Now you tell me if you can tell that that's even there. No. You can't tell. And really, so you see this reflection right here that is from the flash? But I left all of this right here. I left it shining. So it looks like it's just a reflection from that instead of my flash. So it's not that bad. So let us flatten the image. Discard hidden layers. Yes, because I don't care about those guys. Command S, and that will immediately save it back over into Lightroom which is amazing. Back in Lightroom, boom. Immediately goes to the edited photo I have over here. I'm right of center, which is kind of the rule of thumb. Right of center will make your life easier. You can see it and know And my after edits. So I don't know why in Lightroom, Lightroom gets your crap together, but I have it down here set to where it will be uh, supposed to automatically do the verticals it never will do them right, ever. So I constrain the crop, I update, and it kinda does it right. And nine times out of 10, I still have to do it. But what I'm looking for to get it right there. Now, you can still, you can, there's no reason to have that in there. You can crop that in, push enter, knock down that temperature just a little bit, a little warmer. So we have some orange everywhere but we have a good window pool. There's no agent that's gonna be like, eh, this looks nasty because those lights were so stinking orange, it is impossible. We have a nice, clean looking table. 
Uh, we have nice light coming in from the outside. The brick, they can actually see the color of the brick here, which is important. You don't want it to be all orange because of these nasty lights. We have a good looking window pool. Is this the best photo ever? No, but if you do that quickly, there's not gonna be an agent in the world that's gonna say, uh, that looks gross. We're not gonna do it. I'm gonna try something actually. I'm gonna do adjust it, adjustment layer, hue and saturation. Do this. So did you see what I just did there? I just did a, a little adjustment layer of hue and saturation, flatten image. There, a lot of that orange is gone. Command save again. Let's try it one more again. Let's see what it looks like. A lot of the orange is gone, but now it looks kind of blah. There's no flavor to it. So I can warm it back up a little bit. Still okay. It's all right. But like all of this, everything is literally whatever you want to do. And then you can bring up those shadows and stuff again to it. Go back down here. Correct that again. Do the verticals. Uh, let's just crop that out. Doesn't have to be crazy wide. Just showing that there's a fireplace there. Still a little orange. I don't ever like desaturate my photos to where there's nothing, no color at all. To me, that just doesn't look good because it's not natural. So this right here has a nice light coming in. There's some orange because it's there. Uh, the table and the wood and the chairs still have a brown to them. So it's not, I didn't desaturate it so much. Uh, the floor still has that kind of brown reddish tint to it, which is good because that means the chairs do too. And there's still some orange on the ceiling. Nothing wrong with that photo at all. Well, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed today's video or got something from it, comment below. Let me know if you have some problems with orange lights because that's a big issue in majority of houses. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification so you can see every time I put out a new video. Anything that I talked about in the video is cited below in the links. It helps the channel out at no extra cost to you. Thanks, and I'll see you all next time.